you know what, I'm gonna show you how to make this Aurora Borealis rainbow tree painting. Let's do it. Start out with some watercolor paper and some basic watercolors. I'm using Prang, which are basic classroom watercolors, and I am gonna add a little bit of bright pink into those colors. Get them really, really wet. Make sure you have two cups of water, one for rinsing your brush and one for painting with. Tape your paper down, it's gonna get messy. Start by adding large blobs of water all over your paper. Make sure they don't touch maybe like five or six blobs to start with. Make sure to just throw some paint on there. Don't be afraid, swirl that brush in the paint and just blop it down there. Yeah, I said blop, that's a word. Add as many colors as you want. Think about how they might go together, but you don't have to be too careful with this for now because you're gonna do several layers of color over top. I'm making sure that my colors are not touching yet. Just random blobs of color all over the page. Oops, drop some black in there, that's okay. This is gonna get messy. Try to work quickly, but if you find that you're not working quickly enough, keep a spray bottle of water nearby. You wanna keep your paints wet. The reason for this is because we are going to be sprinkling a little bit of salt on top of our wet colors, and it'll make a really cool texture. I'll show you later in the video. The salt trick only works on watercolors that are pretty dark and also pretty wet. So make sure to add lots and lots of color. Notice how while I paint, my colors are not touching each other yet but I'm adding in other colors on top. I'm kind of fading that green into the black and you know, just getting as close as I can to those blobs of color, but not blending them yet. I will be blending them. The reason for this is because you don't wanna end up with a big mess that all blends together that turns into like a boring blob of puce or whatever color that is. Another tip is you can also use colors that you mix yourself instead of using colors right out of the palette. If you add a little bit of another color, like you add a tiny bit of red to your purple or you add a tiny bit of blue to your green, your colors will look a little bit more sophisticated and more interesting. I am doing this, even though you can't tell that I'm doing this on my palette, I'm not really washing my brush, so I'm kind of harmonizing colors as I go. I tend to dip my brush in the water and then dip it in one color and then another just because I'm used to color mixing in the palette, but you can mix your own colors in a separate container and then use them on the paper. You should almost have your whole paper covered at this point. You'll notice that the paper starts to buckle. It's kind of got a wavy feel to it and that paint and water will pool up in some areas and not in others that is totally okay and that's what makes watercolor interesting and beautiful when it dries however if you find that it's pooling up too much in some parts like you can see on the top left hand side I kind of have a big puddle of dark black you can take a paper towel scrunch it up and blot it just a little bit and take some of that extra water out when I have the majority of my paper covered, I am going to start sprinkling on a little bit of salt. I only sprinkle it on where the paint is wet and where it is dark enough to be seen, and I make sure that it's just a little bit of salt spread out so that there's room for air between the pieces of salt. Wherever I sprinkle salt, I do not paint over again, and I don't touch it or move it around at all until it's completely dry. It's really important that you do this, and you want to make sure not to touch the salt with your brush because you can ruin your brush. The reason I started putting salt on before my entire paper was covered, before I joined those blobs of paint, is because it was starting to get dry and I wanted to make sure to put salt down on there. Now that it's on and everything else is wet, I'm starting to kind of join up those blobs. So what you should have is a page that's completely full of color and a little bit messy. You can see that it doesn't look that great so far, but don't worry, we still have a lot to do. Sprinkle a little bit of salt on there and then wait for it to dry and you will see the magic happen. I know you're seeing me touch it with my brush and I said not to do that, but this is an old brush and I am kind of moving things around. I'm also gonna blot off that excess paint just a little bit. I don't have to, but this will be a faster way to get it to dry. Now I'm gonna break out the hair dryer. Watch as I speed this up and you can see what the salt does to the paper. You do not want a salty painting, so make sure to brush all of the salt off. Even use a little muscle if you have to. 
Once your first layer is completely dry, it's time for your second layer. Now all you have to do is just do exactly what you did the first time. Keep your watercolors transparent so you can see the first layer through the second layer of watercolor. Notice I'm kind of using the same colors, but I'm actually making them even darker. It's okay to add black over top of your colors and even blot it off a little bit with a paper towel. You'll be able to see the layers underneath as it dries. Make sure to use your paintbrush really softly so you don't mess up the layers below. You can add salt to this layer as well. Remember when we talked about that hot pink? I added a little bit of liquid pink because my palette didn't have that as a color and I think it brightened it up quite a bit. The pink that I'm using is by Dr. PH Martin, which is a little bit more expensive, but it's well worth it. You can also use an opera pink, which is a color that comes in a lot of brands. Another trick you can use to add texture is rubbing alcohol. I dipped a paintbrush into rubbing alcohol and just flipped some of it onto the painting. It makes the paint kind of go away from the alcohol, which adds a unique texture to it that almost makes it look like space or nebula or something like that. Make sure not to dip your actual paintbrush in the rubbing alcohol or it will ruin your paintbrush. Only have paint on your paintbrush. That's an easy rule to remember. I'm blotting it again because I got a lot of paint on here and then I'm just going to wait for it to dry. This is the part where you have to be really patient or you can just hit it with a hairdryer. Okay, it's dry and the salt is off. Now I'm gonna do it all over again. Seriously, three layers. There's that pink watercolor. I'm gonna add that in for even more brightness. This layer you can add a little more water into depending on the style that you like or what you want. If you wanna add brighter colors over the spots where your colors are, go ahead and do that. If you feel like it's already too bright, then add a layer of dark black or dark navy blue over top of it. I'm trying to be as quick as I can with this. When everything is dry and you're happy with your background, you can add white ink to make stars. I just dipped a little bit of white ink into that toothbrush and I barely touched the end of the toothbrush. Make a little test spray if you can on another piece of paper before you start on your actual three layer maximum effort watercolor paper. Um, what I do is I pour a little white ink or white acrylic, even any kind of white, you could even use white out for this, put it in a little cap or in your palette and just dip it into the end of the toothbrush and then you just flick it on with your thumb or your finger. I use the end of the paintbrush and I add a few little detailed stars and then I let it dry. Sometimes the white ink or the white acrylic takes a while to dry, so don't underestimate the drying time. This is what it looks like up close. Pretty. So you can see how I'm doing this with my thumb. That's the easiest way for me. So that was part one, that was the background only. If you follow the link below, you can do the second video, which is how to do the rainbow trees over the sky. Hope you enjoyed this video.